Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of uh, Tier List Power Ranger Video Guy. I have Peter and Andy with me. Hey guys, how are y'all? I'm dead inside. Sounds about right. I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> Thank God you're just all right all the time, Andy. I'm 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 proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. Yeah, Look at you. I have a little bit of positivity, man. Big fair, big fair. To this day and age, it's hard to get by without a little bit of positivity. You gotta look on the brighter side of the shit pile, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh... So today we are going to be going over Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. Now, as you guys know, we start off with the three seasons of the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, where they then go into Zeo, Turbo, and then In Space. These four season, these four series are all interconnected very in-depth wise overall. Um, with Lost Galaxy, it's the first departure from that because the Zordon era has officially ended. Because at the end of In Space, we have Andros killing Zordon, creating a pulse of goodness that cl cleanses all evil in the universe. Air quotes. <laughs> There's a lot of evil in the universe that did not get eliminated. But because of that, Lost Galaxy also introduced us to something that had not been seen before. A group combination of multiple different seasons overall. Was that Lost Galaxy or was that Wild Force, Andy? Your guess is as good as mine. That was Wild Force. I've lied. I'm a horrible fan. Fake fan alert. Uh, anyway, Peter, are you familiar with Lost Galaxy at all? Peter? Wait, what's that? Are you familiar with Lost Galaxy at all, Peter? Uh, I would have to see it, but I don't think so. Okay. So Lost Galaxy, the helmets definitely changed up a little bit. Here's that the helmets. They're definitely more animalistic. They're more detailed. Just a lot more overall. And that kind of comes from the Sentai for the previous series being way older overall. But here comes the theme song. This is definitely not the third time attempt, third attempt trying to record this. So me and Andy are going to be hearing the first 40 seconds of this like, for the third time. But it's okay because Peter needs to hear this. There. Theme song seemed familiar at all, Peter. Oh yeah, no, it's the pop. Okay, okay. I love how in the short intro they had plenty of time to add in a motherfucking bridge. So that's the intro on it. Uh, there's a lot of repetition in the words, I feel, but at the same time, I feel that each set of repetition that they use is in a different style, which keeps the theme song pretty fucking fresh overall. What are, you, what are your else inputs here? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. I don't know. I mean, it's like it's like a B. A B? Okay, that's reasonable. I could agree with a B. It's like one of those songs you would hear on the radio in the background, and it would just get stuck in your head. Excuse me? Hey, I was, I'd say a high B, little A. Okay. So, as you guys know, we transition now to looking at the Morpher. Now, this series, Morpher, was way different than any other series. Uh, obviously, in the previous seasons... We had been introduced to the wrist morphers and everything like that, but there was always something kind of, you know, I push this and then this and then this, and now it activates. This time they spin wheel, spin wheel become ranger, mm -hmm. which that 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 concept did go on later on to Ninja Storm, but Ninja Storm did it better. So I'm gonna give them a solid C for the morpher because I think the morpher's mid as fuck. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not all that impressive. 
Now, we've got the suits. The suits, why? Wow, that just looks like me as a kid. That's sad. <laughs> My mom made this. My mom made this for me. Uh, but, you know, so we've got more colors. You know, the main cast has a wider white on their uh, suit than before. I think the most that we really ever saw that much additional color outside of the primary color was in uh, Mighty Morphin with the white diamonds on their suits. So it's definitely an interesting departure. Um, and we look here. Uh, that's not what I want. Oh, that's a terrible picture. Here we go. And here, here is the fam. Uh, here's the fam unmorphed. This guy. So, to explain the season a bit to you, this takes place in the future. They live on a space colony called Terra Venture, which coincidentally has the Astro Mega ship in it. And they find this girl on the first world where they get their powers. Now, this season touched on a lot of different things overall. One of the things, obviously, is the beginning, the Red Ranger. His older brother was actually the one that was chosen by the lights of whatever it is for becoming a ranger. He was, a, But then his brother falls into a pit and supposedly dies, right? Thus leaving him to take up the mantle of Red Ranger. We've never seen that kind of an intense opening for a season. I think the closest that we got really was going into tur uh, from turbo into space with the power center destroyed everything in ruins then beat all the fuck to hell going into space i think that's the only time that we've had that intense of an opening um not to mention we had two different versions of the pink ranger now the reason why there were two different version two different pink rangers in this season uh, during the series, if I'm not mistaken, the girl that played the original Pink Ranger passed away from cancer. Oh, dear. Yeah. And so what they actually wound up doing was they wound up tying this season to In Space by having them recruit Andros's little sister, who was the villain in the Power Rangers In Space. She was Astronema. But once the, the wave of goody good feels from Zordon dying erupted, right. she became Coron again. And so, a lot of transitions in the Rangers in this season entirely. A lot of cool shit, in my opinion. I think Suits and the cast and the depth of the cast overall, I would give it an A. Not S tier, A. Fair. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, you would know more about it since I haven't really watched it, so... I'll leave that decision up to you. Fair enough. Let's look at the... Oh, by the way, they take heavy inspiration from space... Uh, uh, Starship Troopers, as you can see. Yeah. So, we got their first morph. Y'all ready? Well, come on! <coughs> That's how they first morph, is they pulled these swords from the stone. Massive Excalibur reference. Yeah, see, that's the original Pink Ranger. I kind of wish they just stuck with it. That's, that's a little bit cooler than, yeah. I mean, they still use the swords throughout the series. It's just they're only available post-morphed, if I'm not mistaken. Now, obviously, time has passed, so VGX effects have gotten way better, so they can do a lot more with the morph. I personally think this is massive step ahead from the previous seasons. Mm -hmm. That was a... <laughs> Wait... I think that's the first time I've ever seen a ranger team finish morphing, right? Yeah. 
No explosion, still standing perfectly still. <laughs> I'm just going to say, the lights of Orion, that's what they're called. Got it. Remember now. Hey, Peter, you remember how I mentioned about how Old Red's big bro died? Oh, see, the fun thing about Old Red's big brother is he did not actually die. He fell down in hole, got possessed by spirit, became Magna Defender. I kind of was kind of wondering if that's what he. Yeah, yeah, that the Magna Defender wasn't even on the planet the Lights of Orion were on. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewatch this season just to try to figure out the logic that they had for that. But out of current Sixth Ranger introductions so far, I will stand and shout that the Magna Defender. S tier, hundred percent compared to everything else. It's a oh, Spaniard yeah. in themed fucking ranger. He's got a cape. Everything is clean as shit about him. This fucking chest piece is cool as hell. What what are your thoughts here, Peter? Hmm That's a tough one. Let me I mean I don't know how I feel about that to be. It looks like badass, but yet so overly. Well, okay, so hold on. So we've you, you've seen this. So if we look here, like Mighty Morphin. So like here's the original Six Ranger, just classic Green Ranger, white, right? Mm -hmm. I meant to say white because we're going to the White Ranger next, right? So we've got that. Zio had the Gold Ranger. Which was this, which still cool. I still think this is cool as fuck too. But uh, then Turbo had the Phantom Ranger. As well as Blue Centurion. I think is his name. Yeah, this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at him in his shirt. It was his day off. He had to go into work. <laughs> but I mean, like, after Turbo, when we went back into space, in space, uh, Silver Ranger, it just became another, like, promo for the basic team. So to see. To see a sixth ranger completely different from the team is just something that was not really seen before this. So now that you've had a little refresher on the other sixth rangers, Peter. Mm. Ah, man, I don't know, man. I'm, not, I'm I don't feel like a fan of this. It's because you. It, is it because you don't like bullfighting? I, it's not just bull, I, I don't know. It's just. It's just so bulky. That's fair. That's fair. However, this is also the first season where we'll get to that in a second. So, uh, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, so, the cool thing about the Magna Defender, right, is at a certain point, uh, Leo, which was Red Ranger's big brother, I can remember Leo's name. I can't remember a single other one of their names. Jesus Christ, that's not boding well for the grading for this season uh, but he eventually gets his body back and so he actually does you do get to see him transform once right definitely a nice morph sequence you've got to at least give it that Peter. It's definitely better than their other ones, I'm guessing, since, you know, they had to twist. <laughs> right. Now, the fun thing about this, this the Magna Defender Morpher, do you want to know something fun about this? Mm -hmm. This is the same uh, transformation device that the season that the White, Power, the White Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Sentai series was based off of. They were, if I'm not mistaken, they were they were chi readers or something like that. But yeah, so there's that. Uh, now, with Lost Galaxy, it was the first time we ever saw a ranger become a Zord. Mm -hmm. 
Which it, it, it wound up happening more often later on down the line, but this was definitely new and novel. So here you go, Peter. Are you ready to watch this? This is changing less from a tier list to a Peter's reaction to Power Rangers very quickly. Fair. <clears throat> All right, you ready, Peter? Yeah, yeah. What's he doing here? He's really making the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood uh, a little too far. When two become one. Defender Torzor, lightning spin. So yeah, that's the Six Rangers uh, Zord, the Defender Torzor. So with with that information there, Peter, what, 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 we've now covered a lot of Magna Defender. Does the Zord just, make him any better for you? You know, he looks like a Lego piece now. <laughs> That's the worst part now. You're, it's over. You're not <laughs> wrong, but I hate that you're right. I, 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 like, you know what's funny? I was like, maybe this might be the one that kills. I'm like, ah, nah, that's the Fortnite Lego. <laughs> <laughs> so next we have the villains. There's a lot of, there's a lot of villains throughout this season. Uh, the primary one, obviously, we've got Trakina. Bug Lady, uh, daughter of Scorpius, which that's also Trakina. Hmm. Let me show you Scorpius. Yeah, that's the that's the big bad. Oh God! <laughs> Look at that great fan art of Scorpius, man. Oh dear. He looks more intimidating in this than he does in here. I think it's the scorpion tail. So the villains were always kind of like mid in this season for me. I was never too impressed with them. Didn't hate them, didn't love them. Just mid. Now, starting at In Space, we were introduced to Battleizers for the first time. So here is the Red Rangers Battleizer from Lost Galaxy. Peter, are you paying attention? No, I got you. This is gonna be on the test, okay? Oh, that's, oh God! Don't even fucking. That's that's PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to point out right now. I hate this. Nah. Thematically, this fits with nothing in this series. This would have made more sense for In Space. Is it cool looking? No. It's not. It does, it does look a little dope, dopey. Like, for fuck's sake, they should have used this one in it. I like, realistically, I know, obviously, they couldn't use the sin f merge the Sentai footage like that. Obviously, I, I understand this. However, why the fuck give the Lion Red Ranger fucking Ridley Scott's first weapon against the fucking goddamn alien? <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and <laughs> you thought what? the same I, dude i'm not gonna lie. first i thought of, uh, was, I, i'm ahead. sorry i need to mention this I, I don't know why this is the first thing i thought but he looks like an employee that would work in a carvel i don't know why that's what i'm going with in my head yeah yeah it should have not been that funny in my head, but it just felt so right. It just feels like any other Red Ranger variation would have just looked better with this. Why is it like 
an X. Why is there like an X fighter on his back? <laughs> So this was whenever Star Wars was real popular in Japan was like, get it in there now! Uh, uh, <laughs> circled back to make no sense in the American... If anybody is watching this and has gotten to this point in the video, and you can explain to me why a goddamn Decepticon just fused with the Red Ranger for this battleizer, we would really appreciate this explanation. He's got Starscream on him. I was about to say, he fucking was merging with Starscream. What the fuck? Me and the Power Rangers will get you, Megatron! <laughs> Just was a bad Green Goblin. Oh, Lord. Okay, moving on. Oh, you had to go there, dude. <laughs> So, okay, we're going to we're going to look at the Zords. Let's see if the lights of Orion is anything of importance. It's a light. I mean, normally Orion is supposed to be a constellation. So, um uh, yeah. right. So, here's the core group, right? Uh Guess I don't need to fucking open up each one individually. So the cool thing about this season, I thought, was like the the Zords had two different forms. They're normal, just like I'm an animal form, and then they became the robot, right? Uh oh no, the Red Ranger's name was Leo. Go me! I knew the Red Ranger's name all along. Uh, that's me Leo patting myself on the back. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> it's like Leo has some connection to a lion or something. <laughs> Definitely didn't have just a weird internet trouble there. But yeah, I'm right. Like these non-robot versions of the lion, this is weird, right? Robot version looks better, yeah. Absolutely. So the Green Ranger this time had a condor. Yeah. That's not a fucking condor. No, it almost resembles that. That's a goddamn kaiju. That's a goddamn kaiju. Yeah, it, it just add two extra heads and just call him King Ghidorah. <laughs> <coughs> now, this is the only one that I thought the non-robot one looked better. When he goes robot, he gets real blocky, and I'm not... It's weird, but like, that's cool looking. Uh, we got the Wolf Galacta Beast, where it just looks like a guy in a bad wolf costume, kind of crouching, and way too eager. Uh, also, what, what what is the pink one? What that's a that? that is Wildcat. What? It looks like a poorly bad rendition of the Sphinx. But like somebody fucking colored it pink. Is this your favorite one, Peter? The wild Wildcat Galacta Beast? I'm just not okay, okay that just was like a fucking nightmare. <laughs> but when they all combine together, they do become the Galaxy Megazord, which somehow has all of the heads. Visible at once. I don't know how they did this. God damn. It's... We're just going to go on to the Orion Galaxy Megazord. The Orion Galaxy. It's just... Extra armor. Yeah. That's all it is. It's not even a different Zord. How dare they betray it... me like this. It's just, to me, it just seemed like they didn't put too much of an effort in this Megazord. From my, like. from my memory, they got this form as a power-up just to the original Megazord. But I don't recall yeah, why. It's just, it doesn't look too much different from the original. And the original looked way better. That's it looks too much like the Wild Force Megazord to me. Hold on, have you guys seen the Wild Force Megazord? Probably have and just forgot.
Yeah. Y'all see it, right? Yeah. It's the same fucking thing. One's just in low graphics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, next we have the Toro Zord, which is a bull that becomes man. I mean, see, now that's, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. I, mean, I'm I, I like it, but Peter has spoken. Peter thought no, it looked yeah, like he, a bad he, Lego piece. He, he did kind of ruin He did this. But I still like it. Now, they did get some extra Galactabeast later on. And uh, so they got the Centaurus Megazord, which was the Rhino Galactabeast. Uh, which is a fusion of tiny car, tiny car, tiny construction, uh, tiny car, and tiny car. They combine to make Centaurus. Now, if those were all cars, what do you think the next one's going to be? Boats? Planes? <laughs> You got it. We got the Strataforce Megazord, which is a fusion of ah oh, spaceships. Okay. <laughs> a whatever the fuck the pod. Now this That's is pod racing. Pod race. <laughs> Dude, the second one, that one right there, that looks like Captain Falcon's fucking vehicle from yeah, they, F Zero. They just borrowed it. <laughs> Let's give it back. Six that's exactly what it is. Fuck. This is just a normal spaceship. Mm -hmm. Earth launched a spaceship and it got assimilated into the Strataforce Megazord. I mean, the, the designs for just the normal, you know, machines that go into it, it still is. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, in my opinion, that, these are still cool. They definitely look a lot better than their their normal Megazord, that's for sure. <laughs> Next, we have the Zenith Carrier Zord. It was a shark what? that then became a flying fortress. What? And then it has a warrior mode. So basically, this thing carries around the Centaurus and the uh, Strataforce mini Zords. You see the little red part there and the blue part there? That's where the divisions are. Uh -huh. uh, that's the Zenith Carrier Zord. You guys can tell how excited I am about all of this. I mean, it's like I said, what? I don't even think they got a few, a combination with the Defender Tor Zord in this season. I feel like the Zords overall, except for the Strataforce Sword and the Centaurus Megazord, just... are all just kind of mid, yeah. So with Lost Galaxy, there's a lot of good, but a lot of overwhelming bad. I would say this belongs in the same tier as Turbo. Yeah. I would say dead equal with Turbo. What What, what are your thoughts here, Peter? Mm. You know what? I don't mind it being on uh, what's called batter. What's that say? Batterizer? Ba Battleizer. Oh, Battleizer. I give it a B. Okay. Battleizer. Okay. There you have it, guys. Lost Galaxy, despite having some cool aspects, just kind of mid. It, yeah, it just, the mm. cool aspects cannot. It doesn't outweigh the weird of the rest of it. <laughs> 